Welcome to openmentor.net. In this session, we are going to talk about test lab where we can track the test execution in HP Quality Center. So we need to first come to the test lab tab, then create test set. This is a folder. Let's say this is like a May 2013 releases. So you can create folders like this. Usually companies will track quarterly or monthly releases as the folder. Within that, we create test set. Test set meaning typically people will use this for build numbers, say build 213. Okay, So you can keep tracking of testing each build under each releases. Again, this depends upon the company's process. Typically, we suggest the folder level is at the release level. The other ones, the test set is for the build. So once you are in one build, you can have multiple releases, multiple builds. Now, you can give a description build 2013. Uh, this has features, login and registration. Because typically in companies, they used to give what is new in this version, right? So you can do that way also here. You can keep track of that in the description. The important point here is the execution grid. In the execution grid, first we need to map which test cases are to be used in this build. To map the test cases for the build, all you need to do is select that test set, click select test. On your left hand side, you see all the things, right? So either you can select test case by test case, pull in, then select the next case, test case, pull in, or if it is too tedious, what you can do is you can select the folder, click on that. It says, do you want to add two tests in this folder? Yes. It will add all the tests underneath that in this one. So if you see here, the test cases that we added, registering a duplicate user, invalid login, valid login, everything comes over here as part of this plan. Now you can close this one. Right now we have added four test cases for this particular test set. A set is nothing but a group of test cases. Since there are a lot of columns displayed here, what I don't want to do is I don't want to see certain uh, columns. Host meaning on which machine you are going to execute. You can either you can have or you need not have that. Now with this, okay, I just remove three columns. Okay. All the other columns are displayed over here. You can resize the columns the way you want. Now, right now, I'm going to say this particular test case must be executed by, see, Abdul is the developer, Ramu is the tester. Right now, I'm allocating Ramu for this test. Just pull that. Then I'm allocating Arjun for this. Then I'm allocating Ramu for this. I'm allocating Ramu for this. Okay. Now execution date and time automatically it will come when you execute. Planned execution date on which date you want, you can select that, it will show the date. Then now you can say 13th you execute this, this particular test case execute on 13th, this particular test case you execute on 14th, this particular test case execute on 14th. You can give the exec planned execution time also, but this will not actually check whether you are executing on that date and time. You can give the date and time over here. When you actually execute, it will fill up this actual execution date and time. Right now, everything says no run. That means this is not executed. So Arjun as a project manager has map created a test folder, created a test set, pulled in X number of test cases, then mapped those test cases to Rambo. Now Arjun logs out. Okay. Before that, let me go to the requirements. Under the requirements, if you see, only one thing is uh, under the no run status, rest is not covered. Again, there is a new registration. Since though people have written test cases, they have not mapped, so it says not covered. Now Arjun logs out. Let us log in as Ramu and then execute the test cases. Okay. I log in as Ramu. I get in there. We will go to the test execution grid. I need to give pass or fail status. QC actually doesn't test it. 
you need to manually execute. Ramu has to execute the test cases on a separate machine and then feed the details over here. Now for Ramu, it shows this. If I go to the execution grid, it shows this. Now Ramu comes here. In the previous thing, we have changed the column names only for Arjun, not for Ramu. So the column names appear over here. Now I go here. I remove iterations I don't want, plan change status I don't want, plan host name I don't want, click OK. This is the setting for Ramu. Now this will remain. Now Ramu can simply go and then change the status right here, select it, passed. Okay. This user can say this is passed. Okay. Now this is done. This is coming to pass status. Now you can see here, okay, if you refresh the grid. Now when you refresh the grid, it says at this date, on this date, at this time, you have executed. Now, if you want to give detailed status, select the test, manually execute it, then you say run, okay? Run manually. When you run manually, it shows a small window, right? Then begin the run. When you say begin the run, it will show you the test steps. For each step, if you select, it will tell you the description. Now I say this step has passed. Now I say this step has passed. Now I say this step has failed. Okay. Now I can say what is the reason for failing? Actual result, I'm saying uh, user is registered, but email is not sent. So I'm saying this as a problem. I give the actual result. Once I give the actual result, I click stop. So I have given a pass or fail status. Since one step failed, it says this as failed. Now I go to this invalid login test. I say this passed. You can say either you can give the pass or fail status here or you can manually run give step by step details. Either way it is fine. But once you give that and then refresh the grid, it notes down how many, uh, on what date you executed, at what time you executed. Now let us go back to the requirements. If you go back to the requirements, now it says this particular requirement passed. It was initially no run. Now it goes to pass the status. This is called requirements coverage. That means a requirement is tied up to a test case. A test case is tied up to a pass or fail status. If the test case passes, this becomes passed. That means you have tested this requirement. This is working. Imagine if you have thousands of requirements, uh, many thousands of test cases, as and when you execute the test case and then you pass or fail status, the status will reflect on the requirements grid. Now, if you come back to the test lab, you know which one passed, which one is failing. Now, I want to say only the passed test cases. All you need to do is type pass and then press the enter. It's a filter. It shows only the passed test cases. If you want to know only the failed test cases, just type failed. It shows only that. If you want no filter, click on that clear. Okay. Now it shows all. This is almost like a spreadsheet filter you have got. So in this session, what we have learned is we created the test folder. We created a test set. We selected test for that particular test set. We assigned that to testers. Then we logged in as that tester, gave the pass or fail status, gave the pass or fail status for the individual test cases also. Now, if you go to the fail status, there is a last run result. If you click on this arrow, it will show you the result of that particular test case. Okay. So this is a, f this is a feature that you could see in Quality Center to get the details of every single execution. With that, we stop this session here. Thank you.